I'll walk you through a workflow for creating a quick digital collage composition. We're starting with this portrait image, and first we will extract the subject from the background. To do this, I can use the Selection Brush tool, use the right bracket key on the keyboard to increase the brush width, then click drag over the model to quickly create a rough selection. Now I will just zoom in here, reduce the brush width using the left bracket key, and just make a finer selection of the finger and the fingernail here. Okay, so I now need to refine this selection to improve its accuracy around the fingers and the hair. To do this, I can click Refine on the Context toolbar. This enters Selection Refinement. All I need to do here is increase the brush width slightly, then click drag and release the mouse button over the hair and the gaps between the fingers to produce a refined mat of those areas. Finally, I will want to change my output to either New Layer or New Layer with Mask. Both of these options will perform color decontamination, which disregards the background color contribution around matted edges, and this will prevent colored halo artifacting around the edge detail. So I'll set my output to New Layer and click Apply. Now we have our cutout subject. We will change the background. Let's add a fill layer by going to Layer, New Fill Layer. Fill layers are flexible as they allow us to add non destructive color, gradient, or bitmap fills to our image. I can move across to the color panel, then click the panel options here and change the color model to a wheel. This makes it easier for me to change the color to an off white. Let's move this underneath the cutout pixel layer. To do this on the Layers panel, I can click drag the Fill layer and release the mouse button once it is positioned underneath the pixel layer. Alternatively, a more precise method is to use keyboard shortcuts. To move this layer down one position, I can use Command and left square bracket on Mac, Control and left square bracket on Windows. Now let's add some composition elements in the form of images. I'll move out to my file browser and click drag the Dust Explosion 1 JPEG. Bring it into Affinity Photo, then hover it over my document view and release the mouse button to place it. It's a large image, so I'll need to scale it down and reposition it. Use V on the keyboard to switch to the Move tool, and we'll just zoom out slightly as well. I'll position this, scale it, and also rotate it slightly so it is sitting behind the model's shoulder. Now I will change the layer's blend mode to multiply, which will blend it nicely against the background. I'll repeat the process for a second dust explosion image. So let's go back out to the file browser, click drag and bring in the dust explosion to JPEG file. I'll position and rotate this behind the model's other shoulder. Then once again, change the blend mode to multiply. Now at this point, I may want to brighten up the dust explosion slightly, as well as the background. I can do this easily using a non-destructive curves adjustment. I can add this using Command M on Mac, Control M on Windows. On the curves graph here, I can just click drag on the line near the first quarter and push it up to gradually brighten everything underneath it in the layer stack. Then I'll close the dialog. Next, I might add some shapes over the top of the composition. Affinity Photo has a wide array of quick shapes we can use. I can click hold on the rectangle tool to access the tool's flyout and select the ellipse tool. Now just be aware of the layer stack. I'm currently on the curves adjustment, which means if I add an ellipse right now, it's going to go beneath the pixel layer. I want it above, so I'll just click to select the pixel layer beforehand. Then I can click drag to draw out an ellipse. To constrain it to a perfect circle, 
I can hold Shift whilst drawing it out. Once releasing the mouse button, I can switch to the Move tool using V, which will allow me to reposition it and rescale it if required. Once again, I'll hold Shift to perform proportional scaling. Rather than fill this with a single color, I would prefer a gradient. To achieve this, I can select the gradient tool from the tools panel here, then just click drag on the ellipse to draw out a gradient. I've already got the left hand stop selected, so I'll change this to an orange color. Then I'll click to select the other stop and change this to a red. Now I'll change the ellipse layers blend mode to overlay which produces an interesting blending effect. By the way, sometimes it is difficult to see the result on its own because you have user interface elements like the gradient line and stops here. A quick tip is to use H on the keyboard to select the view tool. This removes all of those elements and lets you see the image on its own. Now I can duplicate this ellipse using Command J on Mac, Control J on Windows. I'll select the Move tool once again then move this ellipse down and to the right. I want to position this behind the model, so I can quickly use Command and left square bracket on Mac, Control and left square bracket on Windows until it goes underneath the pixel layer. I also want to scale this ellipse down slightly, so I'll click drag one of the corner nodes holding Shift to constrain it proportionally. Also, if you hold Command on Mac, Control on Windows, you can resize around the center of the layer. I'll also change the blend mode to screen, which produces a brighter and less intense blending effect. This is an interesting composition, but it might help the ellipses to stand out if the model was in black and white rather than color. I'll select the pixel layer, then go to layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. At this moment, the black and white adjustment is affecting all the layers beneath it. I want to isolate it to just the pixel layer. To do this, I can click drag the adjustment and offer it to the pixel layer until I see the long horizontal blue overlay. Then release the mouse button. On the black and white dialog, I can alter the red contribution slider to darken the model, which really helps bring out contrast with the top left ellipse. Finally, I might want to enhance the detail and structure of the model. And for this, I could use a live filter layer, specifically a high pass filter. So I will select the pixel layer again, then go to layer, new live filter layer, sharpen, high pass. This adds a non destructive high pass filter. I'll bring the radius all the way up to 100 pixels, and then change the blend mode to overlay. Now, if I close this dialog, I can expand the pixel layer and see both my non destructive high pass and black and white adjustment layers. I may wish to experiment with the blend mode, so with the high pass selected, I can just click on the blend mode option here and see what hard light looks like. This produces a more pronounced effect, but I think I prefer the softer look, so I'll go back to overlay for this composition. The edit is now almost finished. One change I may experiment with is altering the opacity of the black and white adjustment. So up here I can click drag on the opacity slider and this blends some of the color detail back in, giving me a nice balance between the two looks. So this has been a demonstration of how you can produce a digital collage composition using completely non-destructive techniques including vector shapes, adjustment layers, and live filter layers. I hope you found it useful, and thank you for watching.